Hey guys, to help run the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. My goal is to be unbiased and transparent. It's a privilege to serve you. This is not an endorsement. Let's get into it. What's up guys, Brent here, and today we are reviewing the Nash Shorn from a company called Echo Bike. This is the bike right here. It's a pretty cool fat tire electric bike <laughs> big old four inch fat tire something i'm really coming to enjoy the more that i test these something that's kind of interesting about this is it's a full suspension setup so we got this rear suspension right here air suspension and then the spring mozo suspension in the front um just it's just a really cushy ride overall i'm uh, really excited to kind of dive into this before i do though just want to talk real quick about uh, the company echo bike just my experience with them and my experience with direct order only because this company is direct order only so Echo Bike, you know, they're actually a pretty new company. They've just been around since February of 2018. Uh, they started up in Canada, so pretty close by, you know, kind of like a neighbor, right? Um, they're cool people, you know, and they're they're kind of their overall goal is really just to get. I mean, it's a goal that I share, and I think a lot of us share here. You know, you guys and just professionally who who work in this industry is to get more people riding electric bikes not just for recreation but also like for commuting right to kind of swap this out for a car you know with the overall goal of just helping people with health um, and also with the overall goal of you know every car that we take off the road every time somebody rides a bike and not drive that's like a car off the road that's reducing the overall carbon footprint so that's really what their overall goal is that's what they're kind of all about uh, they also kind of have a focus on customer service is what uh, they said when I talked to them. And, you know, honestly, I kind of feel like that's the case. I felt that customer service love when I interacted with them, when I called them for questions, uh, when I shot them emails. It was just really prompt, you know, service. Like, I, they answered the phone. Um, they got back to me, like, really, really quick. Um, a couple other things that I do that, that, that they do that I think kind of speaks to this customer service thing or trying to put customers first is, you know, as far as shipping goes, it's they have a flat $50 fee $49.99 um, to Canada, anywhere in Canada or anywhere in the US, which is pretty a pretty low shipping fee. Sometimes companies can offer them for free, but you know, at least these guys aren't hiding like a $200, $300 fee for shipping um, like I've seen some other direct order companies go do. So that's that's great. Um, another thing that they do is they offer a one-year comprehensive warranty, which is just cool. Like, you know, so if I order this bike and I'm I have an issue with it or whatever, like I have a year to kind of work with them and they can replace stuff. So I, I really dig that. Now, as far as direct order only goes in general, there's kind of one huge benefit that goes along with that. And there's also kind of one, you know, caveat or a couple caveats of potential cons. So the biggest thing is, is gonna be price, right? There's gonna be a savings in price 99 times out of 100. I think that kind of goes with this bike as well. And I think it's, it's, a, pretty, it's a pretty fair deal. It's kind of, you know, it's beyond that entry level range, I think, and kind of more into almost like a, I guess professional you know, electric bike or somebody who's taking this stuff a little bit more seriously than you know, like, like the thousand dollar entry point. Um, but you know, if this was in a bike shop, I think this thing would cost probably quite a bit more than it does um, with these guys. So I think that that rings true with Echo Bikes as well. So cool, kudos to them. Um, now some of the potential cons is going to be uh, a, a, a communication barrier. It can be difficult to just to work with some of these companies sometimes it's you know english isn't always their first language and while they speak they speak english far better than i speak any other foreign language of course um, sometimes it can still be difficult to talk with them and just to have questions answered in a comprehensive understandable way that wasn't the case with echo bike at all these guys um it was just easy easy breezy man like i was saying you know it's a good, good customer service easy to talk with them no issue at all um one other a couple other potential issues that can come with this is you know fit and finish can be a problem sometimes stuff doesn't fit quite right on these electric bikes when i assemble them and also i have to assemble these bikes myself so that's just something to keep in mind that whenever you guys buy a direct order only bike you have to assemble it i have to assemble it right um, but for this fit and finish was perfect everything fit honestly just great and in fact i actually want to call out that this is one of the few one of the very very few electric bikes that i got out of the box put the front wheel on and the brakes were they were aligned perfectly there was no rub i didn't have to adjust them and that's really really rare in my experience so i i really really appreciated that so yeah fit and finish easy 15 minutes to put this thing together it was like an easy assembly nothing tricky and it was just a nice experience which is not always the case really all i had to do to get this thing assembled put the front wheel on put the handlebars on the stem put the pedals on um put the seat post in pump the tires up good to go that's it so not a big deal at all um so yeah that's about it let's talk about this bike now and let's dive into it 
So again, this is the Nashorn, and right off the bat, I just want to say this is a class three electric bike, guys. Um, it has a 750 watt Buffang hub motor here. It's a geared hub motor in the back with 80 newton meters of torque um, with the throttle right up here. And there's also a sealed internal 12 magnet cadence sensor down here on the bottom of the cranks. So one thing I just want to really kind of start with and, and have this be kind of an overarching theme with this video is just safety first with this bike. Um, you know, for me, like what that means is I'm always gonna be wearing a helmet. I'm always gonna be just really kind of paying attention to the road, what's in front of me. Um, because again, this thing can just, it can pick up speed pretty quickly um, and it can go, it can go pretty fast. So with that said, back to this motor, this is that 750 watt geared hub motor from Bafang. I really like the Bafang motors. They are, they, they're a little noisy, uh, maybe compared to the Broza, um, you know, or the Bosch systems, but they're, they're good motors in my experience. I've never had any issues with them, no problems or anything. And it's got eight newton meters of torque. So it's a pretty peppy motor. Um, it, it does a good job of getting this thing up to top speed. I weigh 185 pounds. I was able to get up to the top speed of 20, 25 miles per hour with just the throttle. Um, on flat ground and then if there was a hill I would have to pedal a little bit to get me up to that top speed Which is pretty impressive again given my weight um, and also given the weight of this bike and just the setup So this is you know this bike weighs 66.5 pounds, which is actually You know, I think it's pretty light um, for full suspension fat tire bike That's you know in some cases. It's like 10 pounds lighter than some of the other fat tire bikes I've tested so it's still heavy don't get me wrong, but it's definitely lighter than some other bikes um, <clears throat> Also, you know, these these tires, these fat tires, I love them because they're just, I mean, man, they're, <laughs> they're fat tires. 26 inches tall, 4 inches wide. They do a really good job of floating over <clears throat> any sort of mud. It actually just rained here for the first time, like, yesterday and, like, literally, like, months and months and months. You know, so if I want to take this thing out in the mud, the, this would be a great bike to do that with because the tire patch here is just so wide. I um, mean, it just it floats over mud, sand, snow, gravel, loose terrain so much better than regular sized tires. I can also air these tires down to like five psi, and they get really, really squishy. Um, and it's gonna, you know, these things have suspension properties already because of the air volume. But if I were to air them down, it'd give this bike even more suspension. But if I do that though, it is going to increase that tire patch even even more, which is going to make it float even better. But it is going to increase that rolling resistance. Um, and back to that, back to this motor, 750 watts. You know, this thing is powerful but compared to like having this same motor on a regular size you know like a two inch wide tire uh, bike with a higher psi like 60 or something you know this thing it does feel less peppy than that and that's just been my experience really overall with fat tire bikes is they just feel a little sluggish and you know i think that's just because of the heaviness of the bike overall, I think it's because the, especially when it's a hub motor, you know, it loses some of that mechanical advantage with these, you know, 26 inch tires because really they're like 28 inch tires because that extra, you know, height um, from these, the big tires themselves. And, you know, it's losing that mechanical advantage. It, it takes more effort to kind of get, <laughs> to get this thing moving um, because of that rolling resistance. So, yeah. Now down here, we've got a Shimano Turney derailleur right here. Um, pretty entry-level component, but honestly, you know, I've, I've been using these Shimano Tourneys on so many of the bikes I've been testing here, they're direct order only, and yes, they're entry-level, yes, they're kind of like at the bottom of the uh, Shimano lineup, but honestly, I've never had any problems with them, and I have put quite a few miles, you know, on this derailleur now, so I honestly have not even, well, I've had like one derailment on one bike, and it was just because it was like improperly aligned, but normally, no issues at all. Uh, the rear cassette here, we got 14 to 28 spread. And then the front, we've got a 48 tooth chain ring. So back here though, real quick before I move on, um, you know, you see these, these kind of bosses right here, these two little holes. This is, I can put a steel derailleur cage right there and that would kind of pop down like this and just cover a little bit the derailleur and this power cable. So that did not come stock with the bike. That's something I always like to see, especially on a bike that's really geared towards off-road like this, just in case I get like a, a strike. Having that there would give a little bit more protection to the actual components here. Not a lot, but it would do something. Moreover, it would just, you know, if I lay this bike down or if I accidentally drop it on the right side, having that steel derailleur cage there would just help protect this motor or this power cable from getting damaged and also help this uh, derailleur itself from getting damaged. Over here, we've got this plastic double-sided chain ring guard. Um, I like these because it helps keep the chains locked in place, reduces the chance that it can derail towards the inside or towards the outside. Um, you know, especially with something like this where it's just a regular tooth pattern. It's not like a narrow wide. However, again, this being like an off-road bike, 
you know, maybe this would be better if it was a aluminum chainring guard. And, you know, because like realistically, this is plastic and it's just, <laughs> I mean, if I hit this thing on a rock, I mean, it's probably gonna break. I don't think it's gonna do much in the way of actually protecting the chainring teeth. Really, I think the purpose of this is just to kind of maybe help keep a little bit of the grease off my pants if I'm riding this on the road um, and just help keep that chain locked on. So it does serve a purpose, but protection wise, it's not gonna do really a whole lot. Now, this air suspension in the back, this is pretty cool. It's got about 50, 50 millimeters of travel here. And I wanna show you guys something real quick. All right, let me grab this. So out of the box, um, this air suspension, this here, this in the back, it was really low on air. Like it was like maybe, maybe set for somebody who weighs like 130 pounds. And I weigh again, 185 pounds. I'm a pretty heavy rider. And I, <laughs> I hopped on this thing and it just kept, every time I would hit the slightest bump, it would just bottom out. And I was like, man, this is not gonna work. So I went out and I picked up one of these. Um, it's just, it's a fork, uh, you know, you can put air in the fork. I could probably have used maybe my regular pump for tires, but this thing is just more precise. Um, it only goes up to 20 PSI. So basically what I did here, just to adjust this, is I unscrewed this little, this little thing right here. It's just the cap, like this. Okay, grabbed this thing, basically just plugged in this end, screwed it on, and I pumped it. I baby, it just added like five or six more PSI, and um, it ended up working out great. It's able now to suspend my weight and not bottom out, uh, even on like pretty serious jumps, stuff that I was trying out. So. Um, just something to keep in mind, you know, maybe if you guys do pick this up before you actually go out and ride for a serious ride, just check this back suspension and, and make sure it works for your weight. You might need to pick up something like this because this does not come with the bike. Uh, if you already have one, great. Uh, you can probably find one on Amazon or something for pretty cheap. I just wanted to talk about that real quick because that was my experience. Um, yeah, I just like the way this bike looks though. I, I, I love, I've really come to like this frame style, this kind of sloping top tube right here. I think it does a really good job of just um, reducing the overall standover height. So for people like me with a shorter inseam, it, it just it allows me to stand over the bike with my feet flat on the ground a lot more easier than like a traditional straight top tube. I also like that this saddle can drop pretty much all the way to the bottom. And <laughs> it just, again, this, this is another one of those things for like, if I'm trying to get a smaller rider on this bike or um, maybe if I, want my, if I want my wife to try it, you know, I can actually lower that saddle all the way and maybe this will make it easier for her to ride. Also, something kind of maybe a small detail, but I don't always see the seat post clamps on here being this thick. I've seen a couple of them, but normally they're a lot thinner. And again, small thing, but I really appreciate that because it just makes it so much easier to clamp down um, when it's that wide. It just makes it easier. Small thing, really like it. Also, this saddle, it's a Selly Royale. Uh, Royal Gel saddle. It's got uh, gel inside here. It's, it's an active saddle, but it's actually pretty comfortable. It's just just nice. Good, good, good saddles here from Selly Royale, of course. So with this frame, though, one thing I do want to talk about is there is only one frame size here. And there's only two colors that come with this bike, okay? So, and that's kind of one of the things I really found with direct order only is even companies that have a big selection. These guys have three bikes right now. This is one of them. But even with companies with really big selections, um, there's always, there's not always going to be a lot of selections for the individual frames, a lot of diversity, right? So with this, like this, what you see is kind of what you get. I could get a matte, this matte white color, or I could get matte black, but with that one frame size, this is going to limit who can really comfortably ride this bike, I think. And it's also going to maybe even like just completely exclude some riders who might be like particularly tall or particularly short, like this frame might not work because like for me, um, like I'm 5'10 and this frame, it feels big to me. Like the reach here just, I'm really kind of in a aggressive position, which I, I mean, that might make sense geometry wise since this is, I, you know, really geared for off-road, but I don't know, just kind of my experience, something I want to throw in there. Throw in there. Um, but again, 66 pounds now, <laughs> I do appreciate that. Now the battery here in the middle is gonna be a 48 volt, 13 amp hour battery with 624 watt hours of juice. On the top of the battery here, there's a little um, kind of quick power indicator to see how much battery is left. Four bar, 25% increments, and just kind of a neat way to, especially if I'm off, if this battery is off the bike, I can like use it as a portable power bank because it has this USB type A port right here. So being able to like see how much battery I have left, like if it's in my bag or, you know, it's just a nice way, nice way to check. Now to get the battery off the bike, pretty simple, pretty standard. Throw the key in there, give it a twist, 
pull the latch and that's it that's what that battery looks like right there ba bam putting it back in same thing really it's just the process in reverse just gonna throw that back right here nice and gentle one thing i like about this and if you guys probably just noticed that is i didn't have to turn the key to pull up that latch to put this back in it's just it just automatically sinks in there which <laughs> again another one of those small details which is something i i really like it just makes stuff easy especially when i'm filming or if, maybe if i have like something else in my hands a drink and i'm messing with the battery just it just makes it easy to pop in there now the keyhole is here at the top which is great it's going to be out of the way of the cranks it's going to be out of the way of like my feet if i'm pedaling i'm not going to really strike the key or anything however on this side right here on the bottom this is where the charging port is and that is going to be in the way of the cranks it's really easy for the cable to get um let me see grab the cable here real quick it's pretty easy for the cable to get snagged when it's plugged in with the cranks right just move the cranks around like this and you can just see like it's easy i mean this it's all up in the way right and i actually when i was char i had to charge this thing up before i before i wrote it because uh, it was just about dead and i did actually just pull the cable a little bit with the cranks by accident because i was moving the bike so just something to really be careful for that's just kind of like always a reminder for myself is if i'm going to charge this bike with or charge a battery on the frame i just want to be mindful that look i have the cable in here don't move the bike because it can pull the cable out it can damage the cable might damage the port could even damage the battery last thing i would want is to have a bike that doesn't work so again just something to kind of keep in mind there also since we're over here just want to give you a little quick another shot here of that uh, cadence sensor so this is an internal uh, cadence sensor. It's sealed, and one of the cool things about that is it's just gonna kind of keep dust and gunk from building up a little bit better compared to like the external cadence sensors. 12 magnets, that's gonna be a higher resolution also than some of the fewer magnet cadence sensors, the, you know, the eight and the sixes, stuff like that. But even still, there is gonna be a delay from the time that I start pedaling and the time that I stop pedaling and the time that the motor spits out power and actually shuts off. So there's two ways that I found to kind of get around that. Um, that kind of delay of the start and stop. And, and one of them is if I'm at a dead standstill and like let's say I'm at a, a crosswalk or whatever, but it's bottom of a hill and a high gear. And if I want to get going really quick, maybe, you know, it's going to take a few revolutions of these cranks before this, the, the motor kicks on. Well, this throttle is live from zero miles per hour whenever it's in a positive pedal assist mode. So when this bike is on, I can just twist the throttle and it gets going immediately. And I really like that. I also use this primarily that live throttle feature just to assist this bike upstairs. Um, it just makes it a lot easier to, to move bikes up and down stairs, well, especially upstairs when you've got the live throttle. Um, now, on the other hand, when I want to stop or if I, if I want to cut power to the motor like instantly, especially especially on a bike like this, when I'm going over, I don't, there's no really examples of like tricky terrain, but if I'm like navigating like maybe rocks and stuff going slow over terrain, you know, I, I don't want that motor to activate accidentally, especially if I'm in a really low gear and the cranks, if they move a lot, um, I don't want that motor to activate. You know, maybe I want it to shut off really, really quick and it's just, it's not, it's too slow. So what I do, is just a slight depression of the brake levers here will activate the motor inhibitors and it'll cut power to the motor instantaneously. So it's like an override. So that's kind of how I how I moderate um, you know the cadence sensors is with the, the the motor inhibitors and then with the throttle. Motor inhibitors also just a great feature in my opinion. I really like them because it's just they ensure the shortest possible stopping distance, which again is really important for a bike like this that. It's heavy. Um, I don't want to be fighting against the motor. It's powerful, so I don't want to be fighting against the motor. Um, and for an emergency situation, like I just want to make sure that I can stop, you know, as quickly as I can. So motor inhibitors, really, in my opinion, like just they're a total must. And I, I see them really on almost every single electric bike. So I dig that very much. All right, let's go down. Let's go to the frame here one more time. We'll move to the front, but um, so you can see that most of these wires are going to be internally routed. Um, I don't know what these little things are called that could jut out of the frame. I've seen them a couple times. I really like them as opposed to just cutting a hole in the frame and sticking them in. I just feel like they look real like aerodynamic and sleek. Just aesthetically, I like them. Uh, and they pop out here at the bottom of the top tube. Some wires go in at the top of the down tube and then they spit out at the bottom of the down tube. I like internally routed wires. It just kind of helps protect them. Um, makes the bike kind of sleek, uh, pretty looking in my opinion. Cable management though up at the top. 
eh, just kind of, you know, not bad by any means. They got zip ties. Everything's kind of clean and clustered together. I do like that. I like it when they're wrapped, though. It just, again, just kind of keeps everything looking real clean and nice. Uh, but again, not not bad by any by any stretch. The suspension here is going to be a Mozo spring suspension. It has preload adjust on the left hand side, and it has lockout on the right hand side. 120 millimeters of travel here. The preload adjust is, is going to be kind of like you know pumping up this air suspension. I can make these the suspension stiffer or looser depending on my weight and my ride style. So that allows me to just kind of finely tune the suspension to like my ride needs. Um, also the lockout here is just going to make these shocks dead. So if I flip that switch and I'm bouncing, well if I'm putting pressure on it, they're locked. They're not going to move. And I use that every once in a while if I'm going to be riding for a long time on the road. Um, just flat ground like this, no, no real obstacles. You know, it just saves, um, it adds efficiency to the bike. I'm not going to lose that efficiency from bobbing um, and it's just going to basically increase my range. So it's something I do every once in a while. The light here on the front is a blaze light. Um, it's attached to the arch of the suspension right here. You can see that um, here's the attachment point right there. And then this came unplugged. All I had to do was just basically put this light on, plug this in, and it was it was good to go. And it was all synced up to the, to the electrical system. So having this light here on the arch is cool because whenever I turn the handlebars, the light is going to point the direction that I'm steering. So it's like, you know, the light is going where I want to go as opposed to having it on the frame where the light always points forward. And then the light is kind of where I was going as opposed to where, where I want to go if I'm turning. Now, the bad thing about having the light on the arch here is that, you know, it's gonna be unsuspended weight. Um, it's just gonna bounce around more. It might rattle free over time. You know, there's this point right here where there's a screw, this one right here. And this, I have had these get loose and they'll just kind of drop down or like swing over and I just got to tighten them back up. And that's really just because it's on that arch of the suspension. This uh, light right here, it is attached to the internal, it's attached to the battery and to the electronics. So the cool thing, uh, the cool thing about that is there's no batteries that die on this. I don't have to replace any batteries in this light. Um, another cool thing is I can turn it on and off from the control center, which I'll show you guys here in a few minutes. But um, yeah, I just, I just really like that. You know, nothing, nothing to replace, nothing to really hassle with. Just turn it on, turn it off whenever I want. Now, this light here in particular is not super bright. I'm actually gonna try to turn it on real quick for you. Is it on? There we go. Um, it's always hard to kind of see in the daytime, but this, this these lights here, they're not super bright. Um, they are going to increase my visibility overall, uh, especially with this white frame, it's gonna help add some visibility. Um, but as far as like illuminating my path, Ah, not really gonna do a whole lot. If I if I was really gonna ride this thing off road like at night, I would want to get some aftermarket stuff, an aftermarket light for the handlebars, maybe something for my helmet, um, just to increase my my awareness of the road uh, and keep keep me safe, right? Down here we've got 180 millimeter mechanical disc brakes in the front and the rear. Um, these have these provide you know ample stopping power. It's not overpowered by any means, but it's it's powerful. Um, again, which is important for <laughs> go for the safety, right? Because heavy bike, um, I want brakes that can that can stop this heavy bike and me, a heavy rider, you know, without getting into an accident. And you know, these brakes coupled with the fat tires, that large traction, the large amount of traction there, it, it's 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 fantastic. A couple of things though about mechanical brakes, you know, first of all, they are easier, generally speaking, to kind of. Um, to just like adjust over time if uh, you know, sometimes this cable can stretch out, you know, so I can just kind of unscrew this piece right here, tighten it up, and then that's really all I need to do and I'm ready to ride again. Whereas opposed to hydraulic disc brakes, yeah, they're more powerful, but they, it's a little bit trickier to kind of get those right. You know, I have to bleed them sometimes or whatever. So basically mechanical disc brakes, they're just simpler to operate. However, that, that simplicity does come with a few drawbacks. Um, primarily, it requires more hand pressure to to stop this and with the full for this full stopping power um, for me that's generally okay but for some folks who might have you know arthritis in their hands or maybe smaller hands or maybe even really extra large hands that might be just difficult to apply the the force necessary so something just, just something to keep in mind again also because these are mechanical uh, brake levers here or mechanical disc brakes the brake levers aren't going to be adjustable so I can't um, let this out or I can't bring the brake lever in to to again to kind of finely tune from my reach so just stuff to keep in mind really. Yeah, got the motor inhibitors, got the uh, tires. I think we've covered most of it here. I'm about to move on to the uh, display. One more thing I do want to point out is this um, this kickstand back here is it's a rear-mounted adjustable kickstand. 
in my opinion, this is this is the best place to put case stands if I'm going to have it on a, um, on, on a on a bike right here because it means I'm not going to have pedal lock. So if I'm going to store this thing, if I'm going to pull it backwards when the kickstand is deployed, if I can't get to it right away, I'm not going to get pedal lock. It's not going to lock the bike up. So I, I do like that here. It's also adjustable, so I can, uh, you know, I can take it up. I can let it out if I want to change the angle of this bike, how it rests when the kickstand is deployed. So cool little feature there. So yeah. Oh, one more thing. I do want to talk about the frame here um, because this is an off-road bike. I think. Right. I mean. I can use this in the city. I can use use this to commute, like Echo Bike, you know, kind of kind of wants. But um, I, there's, it's kind of low on bosses. So the, the overall functionality, I think, of this frame is a little bit lower. Um, it's a little bit reduced, and I kind of feel like that just means to me that okay, yeah, this is really an off-road bike. That's kind of what it's meant for off-road fun, right? I mean, I could put a fender up here in the front. It doesn't come with fenders, but I could put it up here. There's some fender bosses, I guess you could say, down here. I could probably put something here attach it to the, maybe the, the seat post or something. I could get a fender in the back, but there's no bottle cage bosses. Um, there's no rack bosses. There's no front basket boss. So I, you know, this is maybe an off-road bike, but is it something I'm gonna use for bike packing? Is it something I'm gonna use for camping, for hunting? Probably not because I can't carry a lot of stuff. Now, if I wanna have a lot of fun and go on the beach and go cruise along the sand, if I wanna to go to Lake Tahoe, go through the snow, maybe take it to the top of the mountain and then ride it back down or something, or maybe just ride it up, I guess, because it's, <laughs> because it's electric. Yeah, that's where this thing is going to shine for sure. So yeah, now we got that. Let's talk about this display right here. This is a, um, I, I like this display actually. It's, uh, it's one of the few kind of like vertically oriented displays that I've seen a lot of times. I feel like they're rotated like 90 degrees and they're more wide like that. So let me turn it back off real quick. So turning this thing on, first of all, I don't have to have the keys and the battery to, to operate this, which is great. Um, just battery in and it's good to go. All I have to do is hold the power button and this thing comes to life pretty quickly. Little boot up sequence and then it is good to go here. Let's see if we can get a better angle. Make sure you guys can see that. All right, so on the top left of this, uh, we have the voltage of the battery, 52.2 volts right now. Top right is gonna be the, the mode that it's in, power mode, normal, or eco. In the middle is, well actually, sorry, in the top left here is also a uh, battery indicator. Five bar battery indicator, not super precise, 20% uh, increments. You know, I always like to have a percentage indicator so I can be like, how much do I have left? 17%, not, you know, I don't know. I like percentage indicators, but maybe that's just a preference thing. Um, in the middle, we've got the, um, just the speed. Bottom left is going to be the pedal assist mode. And then on the right is going to be kind of a series of different things I can see. It can be info, odometer, tripometer, uh, tripometer two, and a trip timer up here in the top. Um, so just real quick, whenever I start this bike up, it is going to start in this configuration right here. It's going to start in pedal assist level one, and it's going to start with the lights off. So I'll show you real quick if I just say crank up to four for whatever reason, and I turn it off. I'm like, okay, yeah, actually, you know, you know what? Let's go, I, I don't want to take a break. I want to go ride some more. Let's turn it back on. And you're like, oh, you're like, oh, actually, hold on a second. I'm in one. Okay, now I'm ready. It's just like an extra step to get back to where I was. Not a big deal. I really wish that, um, you know, these displays would start incorporating some sort of memory. So whatever settings I leave this thing in, it stays in there. But that's fine. Not a big deal. Now, again, back to the, some of the cool stuff about this is it starts in pedal assist level one. And that's where, you know, whenever this bike is turned on, throttle is going to be live. So if I twist the throttle right now, you can see the bike does start moving. Throttle is live from zero miles per hour whenever it's turned on. Just, I just absolutely love that. This does have, uh, well, technically seven, I guess, pedal assist levels. Zero is gonna be just completely off, so it's in zero. If I twist the throttle now, nothing happens. If I try to move the cranks, nothing will happen. Uh, if I do wanna actually use the motor, then I have to be in a positive pedal assist uh, setting here. So anywhere from one all the way up to six, and that's how that looks right here. So. This uh, configuration here is a little bit different than normal. So in order to activate the backlight here and to turn on the front headlight, all I have to do is just tap the power button. Uh, maybe, sorry, yeah, no, it is on. It's just kind of hard to see. Okay, so tap the power button and you'll see that the light turns on. Let's see if we can do this here. So there we go, light on, I'm tapping the power button, lights off, tapping the power button, lights on. So yeah, normally like, you know, on these, on these uh, independent button powers, I have to hold the, the plus button to do that, but you know, whatever. So if I tap the settings button, 
you'll see it's going to might kind of hard to see here on the bottom right you should be able to see it's it's kind of switched stuff is switching around and that's by tapping the settings button and it'll go again to that trip timer the odometer the trip time or the tripometer one and tripometer two so that's how i can switch from that if i do want to activate walk mode on this i can hold the minus button there we go and it does start moving let's move that back right there but again, you know, when I have a throttle that's live from zero miles per hour, nine times out of 10, I'm gonna use a throttle to control low speed compared to the walk mode because the walk mode is like a, it's set at like a, you know, six kilometers per hour or something like that. And it's just, I would prefer to have that fine control if I'm gonna walk the bike with a throttle. Like just, just another reason why I love throttles being live at zero miles per hour. One thing, the other side of this coin for the throttle being live at zero though is, and this has happened to me, so I'm just saying to be careful, please, I don't want anybody getting hurt, is you know, this can get away from me if I'm walking with it like this and I just kind of, my if I'm spacing, if I forget, um, and if I do give it a twist for whatever reason, I've had, this, I've had bikes get away from me and you know, I just, don't want anybody getting hurt with that or like it going to traffic and like chasing after it because that's what I would do. Uh, so again, just, just a reminder here, just a safety thing, especially with this bike, that 750 watt motor, it can't pick up speed really, really quick. So if I wanna actually get into the settings here on the display, I'm just gonna hold the setting button, this one right here. And it's going to go into the settings. Not a whole lot I can do back here, but there is some stuff. There's one, there's setting two, top speed, wheel size. Uh, miles per hour or kilometers per hour and I think it's this is the voltage right here and then if I want to get out I'm just going to hold the settings button and it reverts back to that um, that's pretty much it simple display it's not adjustable so I can't move it to try to like reduce glare but you know I it, it's not I feel like it's not showing up on camera um, on the GoPro screen maybe it'll look better on the big screen but in real life um, it, even in direct sunlight I, I have not had any issues viewing this thing so you know it glare has not been an issue for me with this but it's also not removable without tools um so if i want to like take this thing off at a public bike rack you know just like so it doesn't get scratched up that's not an easy process i gotta bring some tools with me and like you know it's just just not a quick and easy thing and really that just means to me you know if i do leave this at a public bike rack it, it can get scratched up so again not really a lot i can do about that but something to throw out there so yeah i think you know I covered this thing um, pretty extensively, so let's take this out for a ride. This first shot is going to be a chest mounted angle, and this is the trail I've been going on. You guys probably recognize it by now. It's one of my favorite little trails. It's just a cool spot to kind of test out these bikes. And I'm just gonna go ahead and let this run through so you can see this bike in action from this angle. And then in a minute, we will go ahead and switch to a frontward facing angle. So this is going to be pretty much the same path, uh, just from a different angle, and I'll go ahead and be quiet so you guys can kind of listen to the ride and just see this thing uh, from this angle. And then this last shot is going to be of the motor starting and stopping when I start and stop pedaling so you guys can hear that. And I'll also go ahead and switch gears a couple times so you can see the derailleur in action.
right, guys, that is it for the Nashorn review from Echo Bikes. Just real quick in summary before I head out, I think this is a, a really cool bike for being able to go on some pretty serious off-road trails. You know, the full suspension setup here, having that air suspension in the back, the spring suspension in the fork, plus these extra wide four inch fat tires, 26 inches tall, a lot of suspension overall with this thing. Um, and you know, I think something like this would perform really well in places with snow and like lots of rock underneath, especially, but this would do fine on sand, mud, gravelly stuff, maybe crossing through rivers, whatever, really anything that's gonna require a lot of suspension and also a lot of traction. Uh, because these tires and I love that I can deflate these things even more you know all the way down to 5 psi and it just gives me just a, a, hu a humongous tire patch um, really cool there I love love I'm starting to love these fat tires more and more every time I check one out again though this does only come in one frame size so there's not a lot of variety here not a lot of customization that can happen only two colors matte black and matte white like we're seeing here um, no real accessories being offered right now, you know, so I can't get fenders from the company. I could probably add some aftermarket ones. Uh, there are fender bosses in the front. I could probably put some fenders in the back. But again, you know, this I really think this is geared for either commuting through the city if that's what you want to do, or off-road having fun. But the utility again is going to be a little bit limited as well because there's no no rack bosses in the back. There's no fender bosses and there's no bottle cage bosses. So. Fun bike, really not utility bike. But again, if you guys are looking for something fun, I think this would be a pretty cool choice. Um, honestly, I wouldn't mind keeping this bike myself. It's been pretty fun to test. So that's about it. One last thing I do want to say is again, just, just one last time is look, 750 watts of power, top speed of 25 miles per hour. Um, this is a fast bike. This is a powerful bike and it's not going to be legal to ride in a lot of areas. So I just want to give one last advisory of, you know, just please be careful when riding this. Um, I want everybody to have fun, obviously, but just, you know, just to be safe. I don't want anybody getting hurt and especially don't want anybody getting, getting into like legal jeopardy if they get in an accident, like in the city or something and they hit somebody. So yeah, that's it guys. Have a great day. Thank you very much for watching. If you do want to read the whole write-up, check out electricbikereview.com. If you're going out to ride, have fun and obviously ride safe.